Hello and welcome to Bite My Pie. These days there's no shortage of cloud services all vying to be a home for your precious data. Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive to name just a few. But they all have one thing in common. You have to trust them to look after your personal files. What then if there was an alternative to these commercial offerings that at the same time let you stay in control and protect the privacy of your data? That's precisely the role of Nextcloud. A free and open source platform that will enable you to create your very own cloud service. Accessible wherever you want it to be. And it doesn't stop there. Nextcloud can be far more than just a home for your data. By supporting a wide range of apps it can also fulfil your word processing, spreadsheet and presentation requirements. As well as keep your calendar appointments, contacts and much more. All available through the same easy to use web interface. And the best part, other than being completely free, is that it's much easier to set up than you might expect. So if the idea of hosting your own personal cloud sounds appealing to you, stick around. OK, we're going to need some hardware for this project. Now you could run Nextcloud in a virtual machine or even on a Raspberry Pi. But I'm going to use a traditional x86 computer, a beta little mini one. In terms of the internal storage, the bigger the drive the better, as you'll obviously be keeping all of your data on this. Memory shouldn't be an issue as Nextcloud recommends a minimum of just 512 megabytes. For reference, the computer I'll be using has 4 gigabytes of RAM. Lastly, just for the setup, you'll need to attach a monitor, keyboard and mouse. Now that we've got the hardware taken care of, let's go grab the software. In order to make the setup as painless as possible, we're going to use an Ubuntu appliance. If you didn't already know, Ubuntu is one of the most popular Linux-based operating systems. And just as a domestic appliance is built to perform a single operation, for example a washing machine cleans clothes, an Ubuntu appliance is an official image that is built to run a single application, in our case Nextcloud. This runs on top of Ubuntu Core, which is a very lightweight version of the Ubuntu operating system. Besides being simple to set up, this has several advantages. Security and automatic updates, to name just a couple. Right, on an internet connected PC, let's open a web browser. And we're looking for Ubuntu Appliance. It's this one here at Ubuntu.com. So here you can see the appliances that are currently available and we're going to go with Nextcloud and then you can select the system that you want to set it up on. Now it actually says Intel Nook which is a particular brand of small form factor PC but the image should work on most desktop computers so let's select that and then let's download the Nextcloud image. I'm going to save that to my downloads directory. Depending on the speed of your internet connection, this may take a little while, so I'll pause the video and come back when it's done. OK, now if we scroll down the page, you've got the installation instructions. And as I'm on a Windows computer, I'm going to click on that tab. Here you can see a what you'll need list. Since we already covered the hardware for the next Cloud Ubuntu appliance itself, and since I'm not using an Intel NUC, there are only three things to be aware of here. First, we're going to need two USB sticks. These need to be at least two gigabytes in size. I'd suggest using either different brands or different sizes if you have them, as this will help you to remember which software is on which USB stick. Second, you'll need the relevant cables to connect your hardware together, e.g. a HDMI lead for your monitor, etc. I'd also recommend connecting your next cloud computer to your router using a network cable as this will be both faster and more reliable than wireless. And third, we need to download the Ubuntu 2004 LTS desktop image. So let's click on that link now, and then click on download. And I'm going to save that to my downloads directory as well. Now would be a good time to grab a coffee as that's a pretty big download. So I'll pause the video till it's finished. OK, now that that's done, we just need one more piece of software. And this one is called Etcher, and it's at the Bellina.io website. Now I'm going to get the portable version, because that way I don't need to install it. So let's save that as well. And when it's finished downloading, you can close your web browser. 
Right, let's open File Explorer and take a look at what we've got in our downloads directory. So there's the Ubuntu operating system, which we'll use to set things up. There's the Ubuntu appliance, which will run our next cloud installation. And there's Etcher, which we'll use next to copy the Ubuntu OS onto one of our memory sticks. So if you haven't already, now's the time to connect your first USB stick to your computer. And then let's run the Etcher software. You want to select Flash from File, then choose the Ubuntu operating system and click Open. You can see that it's automatically detected my USB stick, which is a 64GB Kingston. If you needed to pick another one, just click on Change. And when you're ready to proceed, click Flash. Choose Yes to continue, and there it goes. The flashing process will take a little while, so I'll return when it's finished. With the flash complete, we can eject the USB stick from our computer and close the program. Keep it somewhere safe as you'll need it shortly. Now we're going to pop the second USB stick into our computer. Most thumb drives are formatted as FAT32 for maximum compatibility, so let's make sure that's the case here. And you can do so by right clicking on your USB stick and selecting Format from the menu. Make sure that the file system is set to FAT32 and the Quick Format option is ticked and then click on Start. Be aware that this procedure will wipe any existing data on the USB drive and when you're happy to proceed, click OK. When it's done, click OK again and then click Close. Right, we're now ready to copy the Ubuntu appliance onto the USB stick. So right click on Next Cloud Core and select Copy. Then click on your USB stick and this time choose Paste. When that's done we can right click on the USB drive and eject it and then safely remove it from our computer. Again keep that safe and try not to get the two USB drives mixed up. In order to create an Ubuntu appliance we first need an Ubuntu account. Don't worry, if you don't have one already, it's completely free to set one up. So to do just that, let's open a web browser and head to login.ubuntu.com. If you have an account, you can log in with your email address and password. If not, select I don't have an Ubuntu One account. Then fill in your details, create a username, choose a password, Tick to agree to the terms and conditions and then create an account. You'll need to verify your email address and then you can log in. Once you're logged in, you want to click on the SSH keys section. Let's move this to one side. In Windows, you can click and drag the top bar to the side of the screen and then let go. By setting up an SSH or secure shell key, we'll be able to connect securely to our Ubuntu appliance. And to do this in Windows, we first need to make sure that the SSH client is installed. We can check this by going to the Start menu, selecting Settings, then Apps, followed by Apps and Features. Then finally look in Optional Features. Hopefully it's already in the list, but if not, you can get it by adding a feature. Right, let's close the Settings window. Then we need to open up PowerShell, which we can type in the search box and launch from here. Now while this is a command line utility, don't panic as we only need to enter a couple of commands, both of which are pretty straightforward. So the first one is simply ssh-keygen, then press enter. You can press enter again to save the file in the default location. Now if you want to add more security, you can enter a passphrase here, or if not, you can just leave it empty and press enter to continue. Then either enter your passphrase again, or just press enter to leave it empty. Ok, let's clear the screen by entering cls. And now we just need to type in our second command. Which is, type, space, tilde, backslash, dot, ssh, backslash, id, underscore, rsa, dot, pub, space, pipe, space, clip, dot, exe. When we execute this command, it will copy the contents of the id underscore rsa.pub key file onto the clipboard. So let's do that by pressing enter. 
Now while that doesn't look as if it's done much, if we come back over here to our Ubuntu account and right click in this public SSH key box and then choose paste, you can now see the contents of your public SSH key file. And all you need to do to add it to your Ubuntu account is click on import SSH key. And with that done we can log out of our Ubuntu account and close both the PowerShell window and the web browser. The time has now come to fire up our prospective Nextcloud box. So connect the USB stick containing the Ubuntu 2004 LTS desktop image to it. Plug in a network cable to your router and attach a monitor keyboard and mouse and then hit the power button. You may have to enter your computer's UEFI or BIOS to change the default boot order and set it to boot from the USB stick first. If this is the case make sure you save your changes before exiting. Alternatively if your computer has a boot menu you can tap the relevant key to enter this instead and then simply select the USB stick from the list. Let's speed things up while it boots. Since we're only using the Ubuntu desktop operating system to help us create our Ubuntu appliance we don't need to install it. So click on try Ubuntu to continue. Now that we're at the Ubuntu desktop we need to plug our second USB stick, the one with the next cloud Ubuntu appliance on it, into the computer. Next we need to open the terminal. The quickest way to do this is to hold down the control and alt keys on your keyboard and press T. Or alternatively you can find it in the applications menu. You may have to move down to the next screen. We're going to use a couple of commands in the terminal to copy the Nextcloud appliance from the USB stick to the computer's internal drive. So first we need to enter sudo space fdisk space dash l. Then press enter. What we're looking for here is the computer's internal disk. So if you use the scroll wheel on your mouse to scroll back up, you should be able to find it. If the computer only has a single hard drive or SSD, it's usually dev SDA. But you'll be able to confirm this by looking at the information. For example, I know that this machine has got a 120 gigabyte SSD, so it's definitely dev SDA. Once you've located yours, make a note of it, and then you can close the terminal window. Yes, I know that's only one command, but to save a bit of typing in the second one, we're going to take a shortcut. So let's open the file manager by clicking on it. Select your USB stick. As we're booting the operating system off one of them, it should only be the other that appears. But you'll know it's the correct one if you can see the next cloud image. Right, from here, click on USB and then choose Open in Terminal. And now we can enter our second command, which is xzcat space nextcloud and then if you press the tab key on your keyboard it will auto complete the rest of the file name. Make sure that there's a single space after the Z then type pipe space sudo space dd space of equals and then the drive label that you made a note of a moment ago in my case forward slash dev forward slash sda then another space bs equals 32 capital M space status equals progress semicolon space sync. So in case you're wondering exactly what this is going to do, the next cloud core image file is compressed in the XZ file format. So the XZ cat command will output the contents of the next cloud image and send them to the DD command which will then write that to the computer's internal storage, in my case dev SDA in 32 megabyte chunks. As it does so, it will show us the progress. And finally, sync makes sure that all the cache data is written to the disk. OK, now we know what's what, let's press enter to continue. Job done, and now we need to reboot the machine. So let's close the open windows, go to the power button, power off and then click restart. When you get to the screen that says remove the installation medium disconnect both of the USB sticks from your computer and then press enter to continue. 
Once it reaches this screen we need to press enter to begin the configuration and then press enter again to continue. So first we're going to set up the network connection. Since we've got a network cable plugged into our router use the cursor keys on your keyboard to highlight ETH0 and then press enter to select it. Make sure that user static IPv4 configuration is highlighted and press enter again. Since the next Cloud Ubuntu appliance is effectively going to be a personal cloud for our data, we're going to give it a static IP address so that it always stays the same. If you're not familiar with setting IP addresses, check out my static IP video, I've put a link in the description. My home network is on the 192.168.0 range, so this is what I need to enter into the subnet. And because we're using the network address, it needs to end in .0. So if for example your home network started with the numbers 192.168.1 you'd put a dot zero on the end of that and then because home routers typically use a class C network we need to put a forward slash followed by the number 24 at the end then press the downwards cursor key to move down to the next line here we just need to enter the static IP address that we'd like to use with our next cloud Ubuntu appliance I'm going to go with 192.168.0.10 then press your cursor key to move down again the gateway is the IP address of your router so for me that's 192.168.0.1 when you've entered yours move down to the next line for name servers I'm going to use Cloudflare's public DNS which is 1.1.1.1 if you'd rather use your internet service provider's DNS, you can just type in the IP address of your router again. If you use a domain name on your local network, you can enter it into search domains. Or alternatively, you can leave this blank. And when you've made all your entries, press the down cursor key again, and then press enter to continue. Then if we move all of the way down to done, we need to press enter again to select it. You can check that it's got the address that you set. So for me that was 192.168.0.10 on a 24 or class C network. Then press the down cursor key to highlight done and press enter to select it. Next you need to enter the email address of the Ubuntu account that you set up earlier. Then press enter to continue. And then press enter to finish. Jot down the SSH login command. And if you're really security conscious, you could also make a note of the host key fingerprint. When you've done that, you can disconnect your monitor keyboard and mouse and leave your next cloud box powered on and connected to your router. OK, if we return to the computer where we earlier generated our SSH keys and open the command prompt by typing CMD in the search box and pressing enter. Now, while you shouldn't have to do this very often, I'm going to show you how to remotely access your next Cloud Ubuntu appliances terminal on your home network. So this is where that SSH command you jotted down a moment ago comes in. So it's SSH space the username of your Ubuntu account at and then the IP address of your next Cloud Ubuntu appliance and then press the enter key on your keyboard. If you did make a note of the host key fingerprint, you can double check that here. And as this is our first time connecting, we need to type yes and press enter. And congratulations, if you're seeing the flashing cursor at the command prompt, you're now remotely logged in to your Nextcloud Ubuntu appliance over your home network. If at some point in the future Nextcloud wasn't working, you could try connecting in this way and issuing the following command. And that is sudo space reboot and press enter and as you've no doubt gathered that's restarted the next cloud computer so let's close the terminal and get into next cloud okay so to access next cloud we need to open a web browser and then type in the static ip address that you set for your ubuntu appliance which for me is 192.168.0.10 from here we need to set up an admin account I'm just going to use the username admin or lowercase and then you need to create a password I'd suggest leaving the install recommended apps ticked as it gives you a good selection of apps to get you started and when you've done that click on finish setup this may take a little while so it could be a good opportunity for another coffee 
If you left the recommended apps checkbox selected, you'll see it running through the installation of those apps. And eventually Nextcloud will start to fire into action. When it finally reaches this screen, your Nextcloud Ubuntu appliance is ready to go. If you flick through the splash screens, it tells you more about Nextcloud, including the fact that there are various apps available for it. And when you reach the last screen, you can click the Start Using Nextcloud button to get started. Right, so let's first familiarise ourselves with the interface. Along the top bar, we have shortcuts to the various installed apps. When you first log in, it defaults to the Files app. And as the name suggests, this is where you'll find all of your files. Nextcloud has pre-populated it with a few basic examples for us. So here in the root directory we've got three folders and three loose files. You can click on a file to display it and use these arrows to move between files within a directory. So here's the video or we can go back to the picture. You can click on the open sidebar icon to reveal more information about a particular file. You can click the three little dots to add tags to a file. You can add comments to it. If you've set up other users in Nextcloud, you can share files with them. And then if you've been working on a particular document for a while, if you need to, you'll be able to revert to previous versions of it. You can also favourite your documents by clicking on the little star. And then when you finish with the sidebar, you can click the cross to close it. And likewise, this cross will close the file. If you favourite a document, it will now appear at the top of the files list. Within the files app, which is obviously the home of your data, you can also view things that you've been working on most recently, anything that you've put in your favourites, any items you've shared with other users. If you use tags, you can use them to filter your files. There's a deleted files or recycle bin if you prefer. It tells you the total space that your files are currently occupying. And then we've got some settings, including the WebDAV protocol, if you'd like to use that. To return to the files main view, you can either click on the next cloud icon in the top left, or the files icon itself. Also notice that as you start working on your files, the most recent ones will begin appearing in this list along the top. Folders work as you might expect, and you can simply click on one to enter it. And then let's say I want to read this next cloud flyer, which is a PDF file. I just click on that. I can click on the little icon at the top left to toggle the sidebar in and out, which will reveal all of the pages contained in the PDF. Then just select one to read it. If I want to go full screen for a better reading experience, I can click these arrows on the right. And then I can press the escape key to exit out of that. And then the little cross will close the PDF. The little icon to the right of a file or folder will give you quick access to its sharing settings. And then the three dots to the right reveal a file or folder's context menu. And then from here we could rename it, move or copy it to a different location, or even delete it altogether. Remember all of these files are stored on your next Cloud Ubuntu appliance, so you have the option to download them to the computer you're currently working on. If you choose to download a folder, so let's say documents for example, and click the three dots there and then choose download, you'll notice that because it's a directory containing multiple files, it saves it as a compressed zip folder. So if you download this, you'll need to extract it once it's done. But that's pretty easy to do. You just choose the directory you want to save it in. Let's put it in my documents. Click save. And then if we open File Explorer, if you're on Windows, go to your Documents, right click on the zip file that you just downloaded, then choose Extract All and click Extract. And there we have our Documents folder, complete with all the files. So that's how we get files off of Nextcloud and onto our PC. But what about if we wanted to go the other way and put files from our computer into Nextcloud? That's where this plus button comes in. On the context menu here, I can select Upload File. And then if I navigate to what I want to upload, I can select it and click Open. And there's my appliances picture. But being a picture, I might not want it in my main files directory. So let's move it into Photos instead. Now the long-winded way would be to click on the three dots to the right of the file, and then select Move or Copy, and choose where you want to move it to. 
but the much faster way is to click and drag on the file itself and move it into the folder you want to put it into and then let go. Now let's just double check it's in there and there we have our uploaded file. Okay you may have noticed on the plus menu we can also create new items from here. So I could create a new folder by clicking on that and then just give it a name and press enter. And now we've got a new directory to do with as we please. Let's go back to the main folder by clicking the little house and return to the documents directory. Instead of clicking on the three little dots you can right click on a file to reveal the same context menu. Let's click again on the plus symbol. Lower down this menu you have some very nice features. So you can create a new text document but much more impressive is the ability to create a word processing document, a spreadsheet or even a presentation. These are available because we chose to install those recommended apps during the setup process. The app in question is the Calibora Online Development Edition, or Code for short. It's based on the free and open source LibreOffice suite, but designed to run in a web browser. So let's take a quick look at it by creating a new document. Give it a name, and then press enter. If you get this blank screen, don't worry, just close it with the cross, and then click on the document you just created. And here we have our very own word processor working in a web browser and without having to install any software on our actual computer. And because this is in a web browser you could actually use it on any of the devices on your network. This office package saves documents in the open file format. But if I quickly type in some text, a very nice feature is the ability to click file and then go to download as and choose to save it in different file types. So let's say I wanted to email it to somebody, I could choose to save it in the very popular Microsoft Word document docx file format and then save that to my computer. Okay before we move on from the files section I'd just like to point out these boxes on the left. By selecting one or more of these we can click on actions and then apply an action to all of the selected files which could come in quite handy as you build up your file collection. The next app along is Photos, although it does actually contain a sample video file in there as well. Because we have multiple pictures, if we click one, we can now click this play button to start a slideshow and it will move between them. As with the Files app, you have a side menu down the left where among other things you can view any photos that you've made your favourites and also see any that you've tagged. The Activity app lets you see what's been happening on your next cloud server. You can dig into the various sections by using this menu on the left. If you've set up multiple users in Nextcloud, the Talk app will allow you to have live chats and even video calls with one another. The Mail app allows you to access your email through Nextcloud. So for this you'd pop in your details here and hit connect. If it doesn't connect automatically you can click the manual tab to pop in your settings manually. Next along on the top bar we have the contacts app. You can obviously manually create new contacts. But if you already have an address book in another program and you'd like to transfer it. So long as you can export your contacts from that program in the vcard or vcf file format. You can upload them into Nextcloud contacts. To do that, once you have your exported file, click on settings at the bottom left and then select import contacts. And then if you click on select local file, you can browse your computer for your exported contacts list. OK, and then the last app that we currently have in the top bar is the calendar. And in here you can simply click on a date and then enter an event. So let's click in the box and enter a title and then click save. If we go back to the files app let's take a look at the icons at the top right. So first up we've got the search box. Here we can quickly search for a file within Nextcloud. If you recall I uploaded that appliances image earlier. So let's do a search for that now. So although we're not even in the right folder it's found it and tells us that it's in the photos directory. 
Next at the top right we have the notifications icon so let's click on that. So here we can see what's been happening in our Nextcloud appliance and right at the top it tells us that Nextcloud has been updated and best of all we didn't have to do a thing. If you want to read the rest of the information simply click on it. Next along we have a contacts icon. So if you start to populate Nextcloud with your contacts you can obviously search them from here. And then at the top right we have our accounts icon. Since we're logged in as an administrator this is particularly important and that's because it gives us access to the system settings, apps and users. Let's first take a look in settings. In the personal section on the left we have personal info which is fairly self-explanatory. Security allows us to do things like change our password or set up two-factor authentication. Activity allows you to select the things you would like to be notified about. There's a mobile and desktop section which provides information on the various apps you can use to connect to Nextcloud. Accessibility includes that all-important dark theme. Privacy will tell you who has access to your data. Calibora Online is the office part of Nextcloud. So if you do a lot of work with templates you could set up your own template directory in here. So those were the personal settings relevant to this account. If we scroll down in the bottom section we've got the administration settings. First we have an overview. You can see we have this security warning informing us that we're using Nextcloud over an unencrypted connection. If you only intend to use it on your home network this isn't really an issue. Next down in administration we have support. You can see here the various ways we can get help should things not go entirely according to plan. Basic settings are probably best left alone, although you can set up an SMTP email server if you'd like to receive notifications via email. The sharing section allows an administrator to set precisely what Nextcloud users are allowed to share. Security allows you to take control over how anyone using your Nextcloud server logs in. So you could enforce two-factor authentication for example. Probably overkill if you only intend to use it on your home network, but if you do intend on opening Nextcloud up to the internet, well worth considering. For anyone not aware, two-factor authentication simply means you need two things to log in. Usually this is something you have and something you know. So the something you have is often a smartphone, where you may receive an authentication code to allow you to log in. And the something you know is often a password. And if two-factor authentication is enabled, you wouldn't be able to log in unless you inputted both of these entries. Also in the security section, you can alter the password policy. By default, passwords have to be a minimum of eight characters in length, and common passwords are forbidden. As an administrator, you can set the default activity notifications for new users. If we scroll down again, there are admin settings for the Talk app and also for Calibora's LibreOffice base suite. But unless you know what you're doing, these are probably best left alone. We then have a usage survey. This is for if you'd like to help the developers improve Nextcloud by sending them some data about your current setup and usage. And then down near the bottom we have logging, which could be useful if you need to troubleshoot any issues. And then lastly, there's system, which provides some useful information about the hardware you're running Nextcloud on. OK, let's return to the user account icon and select apps. Here we can see all of the apps that are installed in Nextcloud. We can narrow the selection down to the apps that are active, or to those that have been disabled. You can see if any updates are available. As there's one here for the Calibora Office Suite, I can simply click on the update button to get the latest version, and then pop in my password to confirm that I'd like to update the app. You can see that everything is now up to date as updates has disappeared from the menu. Don't worry, I'm not about to go through them all, but there's a wide range of apps divided into categories that are available for Nextcloud. Obviously some are already installed. Let's say for example I didn't want the Mail app anymore. If I don't want to go hunting around to locate it, I can search for it in the search box. So let's type Mail, and there it is. So first let's disable it. And you can see that the app is no longer available. But if you'd like to completely uninstall it, just click on remove. OK, so that's how you get rid of an app from Nextcloud, but what about adding one? So as an example, let's install the Music Player app. Now you could search for it like we did for Mail, 
but I happen to know that it's in the multimedia section. And if we scroll down a bit, there it is, music. If you click on it, you can read more information about the app. And then installation is as easy as clicking the download and enable button. And then pop in your password to confirm that you'd like to install it. And now we have a music player. And you can see that the icon has appeared in the top bar. So since we've now got a player, we just need some music. Let's return to files, click the plus sign and upload some. And it just so happens that I've got a track waiting here in my music directory. So I can select that and click open. And there it is. Now if you're going to do this with multiple albums, you probably want to create some folders and organize your collection. But for demonstration purposes, this single track will suffice. So let's click on it to start the playback. And then you've got controls at the bottom, so let's pause it here. Alternatively, you could return to the music app itself. While this isn't much use as things stand, as you build up your music collection, being able to sort through the tracks and create playlists should prove increasingly useful. OK, that about does it for apps. Except to say that you can visit apps.nextcloud.com to see the full range of what's available. Right, so the final admin section that we should look at is users. Now at the moment this isn't particularly exciting because we only have the admin account. So let's create a new user by clicking on new user. You need to give them a username. I'll just use Bite My Pie. Then you can enter a display name. And then we need to pop in a password. You can enter an email address if you want to. You can add a user to a group, which could be useful if you have multiple users. At the moment we only have the admin group, and for obvious reasons I'd be very selective who you add to that. In fact, it's not really advisable for any regular user to only use an admin account. And for this reason, even if you're the only person who will be using Nextcloud, I'd still recommend setting up a non-admin account for your daily use. When creating a new user you can assign them a storage quota which by default is unlimited but if you want to put a limit on how much data the user can store on Nextcloud you can set that here and when you're ready to create the user account click on the tick and then enter your password to confirm. In a moment I'll log in as that new user but first let's go through the last couple of options on the user account menu. Clicking about simply relaunches the splash screen that you saw when you first logged in. And then if we close out of there, help just does what it says on the tin. Not only does this give you access to the help documents stored on your Nextcloud server, but there are also links to both the Nextcloud online documentation and the forum. And then the last thing I'd like to show you before logging in as the new user I just created is how to share a file with another user. So if we return to files, and just as an example I'm going to share that music track that I uploaded. So if I click on the little share icon, and then click in the sharing box, then type the name of the account you want to share it with, in my case Byte My Pie. And when the account's display name shows up in the list, click on it. So that music track is now shared with Byte My Pie. But if I want to control exactly what that user can do with it, I need to click the three little dots. By default you can see that they can edit the file or even share it with someone else. So if you don't want that to be the case, adjust the options as necessary. You can even unshare it if you change your mind at a later date. OK, with that done, let's log out of the admin account. And now let's log in as a regular user. So I'm going to use the Byte My Pi account I just set up. Let's close the splash screen and you can see straight away that the music track has been shared by the admin account. We can also see what's been shared with us by clicking on shares on the left. And for me at the moment that is just the music track. If we return to all files, notice how our new user account has also been populated with those same sample files and folders. Obviously if you don't want any of those you can simply remove them. From a usability point of view, as a regular user things look pretty similar to the admin account. 
we still have the various apps along the top. The main difference is in the user account drop down menu. Notice that we no longer have access to the apps or users sections. And even if we click on settings, we can only change those relevant to our user account as the administration settings are no longer accessible. And there you have a regular user account in Nextcloud. Let's now take a quick look at connecting to Nextcloud using a couple of apps rather than the web browser. So on a Windows computer, let's go to nextcloud.com. And if we hover over Get Nextcloud, we're going to click on Desktop and Mobile Apps. I'm going to make sure that Download for Desktop is selected. And as I'm on a Windows PC, I'm going to click Windows. Then save that to my Downloads folder. When it's finished downloading, you can close your web browser and then open up the downloads folder. Right, so let's install the Nextcloud desktop app. Double click it to begin the installation. Then click on yes to proceed. Click next to start the wizard. You can select the type of install. Standard will be just fine. Click next again to continue and then click on install. When it's completed, click on next again and then click on finish. Now even though the run next cloud checkbox was ticked, it doesn't actually look as though it's done much. But if we close file explorer, you can see the next cloud connection wizard was hiding behind it. OK, so now we need to log in this Windows desktop app to our next cloud server. And you can do that by typing HTTP colon double forward slash and the IP address of your next cloud appliance which for me is 192.168.0.10. When you've done that, click Next. Now you need to log into your Nextcloud account. And for security, I'd recommend that this is a regular user account, not an admin one. So I'm going to pop in Byte my Pi and my password. And then I'm going to click Login. We need to grant the app access to our Nextcloud account. And that's it, with the account connected we can close the web browser. Then all that's left to do is choose what data you'd like to sync from your Nextcloud server. I'm going to leave it on the default of everything. And then choose where you'd like to sync it to. By default Nextcloud will create a Nextcloud folder within your computer's home directory. You can click on this if you'd like to change it. But again the default is fine for me. And when you're happy with your choices, click connect. And you can see from the notifications that the data is just synchronized. You can get to these Nextcloud status messages either from the taskbar by clicking the little Nextcloud icon or by double clicking the Nextcloud shortcut. From here you could remove the account from the desktop client or add a different one. You can also look at the client settings. Here you can see the folders that are syncing from the Nextcloud server. You can click this link to visit the web interface. Here we have the general options. If you intend to make Nextcloud a part of your daily computing, it's probably not a bad idea to tick this box to have the desktop client launch automatically on system startup. And then there's an option for your network settings. If everything's working OK, you won't need to touch anything in here. Also in the Nextcloud status box, we have a folder icon. Clicking this will open File Explorer and take us straight to our Nextcloud directory. The green ticks indicate that everything's synchronized and up to date with our Nextcloud server. And the little sharing icon informs us that this is a shared file. Remember that unless you changed it, the Nextcloud folder is located inside your computer's home directory. So any files or folders you put into this Nextcloud folder will automatically sync with your account on the Nextcloud server, making them accessible on any device you connect from. And then the Windows Desktop Client also gives us access to the apps that we've got on our Nextcloud server. These are simply links to the web interface, so clicking on one will take you there. By using a Desktop Client you can really integrate the data from your Nextcloud server, making it easily accessible just like any other folder on your computer. Now let's look at using the Nextcloud app on a mobile device. So here I am on Android and the first thing I need to do is open the Play Store and then I'm going to search for Nextcloud. While this is the Android app, Nextcloud is also available in Apple's App Store for iPhones and iPads. So tap on Install to install it. 
Once that's done you can close the Play Store. If you don't have a shortcut on your home screen you may need to find it in the app drawer and then you can tap to open it. From here select Login. Since it's going to be working with our data we need to allow it access to our files. Then pop in http colon double forward slash followed by the IP address of your Nextcloud server so mine's 192.168.0.10 and then tap on the arrow and then you need to log in so pop in your username and your password and then tap login you need to grant your device access to your Nextcloud account and that's it we're connected you have your account options at the top right and a drop down menu at the top left as with the desktop app your data will automatically synchronize and you've got this big plus button in the bottom right to add things to it so there's a quick look at the Nextcloud mobile app now that we know how to install Nextcloud and get going with it on our devices there's just one more essential element I'd like to discuss in this video and that's the topic of backing up Backing up your data is the single most important thing to do, no matter what computer software you're using. So let's look at how to do this with Nextcloud. I'm going to show you how to do this from the same Windows computer that I set up the SSH remote connection to Nextcloud on earlier. If you'd like to do this on another computer, you'll first need to copy the SSH keys to that PC. The easiest way to do this is to locate your home directory in the C drive and using a USB stick or even Nextcloud itself copy the entire .ssh directory to the home directory of the computer you want to run the backup on as I'm running the backup from here I don't need to do this right next we need to grab two pieces of software the first is WinSCP which we can download from winscp.net as the name suggests this is built to run on Windows so let's download the latest version here as usual I'm going to save that to my downloads directory and now let's grab the second piece of software which is a variation of the program putty we can get this from the Chiart Green End website so click on the stable download link and if we scroll down we're going to grab the putty gen utility unless your computer's pretty old you can get the 64-bit version and save that program as well now that we've got those we can close our web browser and let's go find them in our file explorer downloads directory let's first install winscp I'm going to go with the recommended option click yes to continue and then accept the license agreement for our use case the typical installation is just fine and you want to leave the user interface style on commander and then click on install I'm going to deselect both of these options but you may want to take a look at the getting started page and then click finish and now we've got a nice handy shortcut on our desktop to launch the program but before we do that let's double click on the putty gen utility we downloaded then click on conversions and select import key from here first of all make sure that you're in the .ssh folder in your home directory and then single click on the ID underscore RSA file to select it note it's the private key file that we want the one without the extension don't select the public key file which is being incorrectly identified as a Microsoft publisher file here and then you need to click on open if your key file contained a passphrase you'll have been prompted to enter it if not you'll be looking at the screen we've got here either way you need to click on save private key as I'm not using a passphrase I need to click on yes to continue and then again making sure that we're in our .ssh directory we need to give our converted key a name so I'm just going to call it backup and then click on save then you can close any open windows right let's launch WinSCP the reason we just had to convert our private SSH key is that WinSCP only supports keys in the putty PPK file format and we need the key to connect remotely to our Nextcloud server so here at the WinSCP login prompt we need to enter our connection details leave the protocol on SFTP which stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol then for the host name pop in the IP address of your Nextcloud Ubuntu appliance 
pop in the username of your Ubuntu account. Remember this is the online account that you set up earlier at login.ubuntu.com not your next cloud username. When you've done that click on advanced then under the SSH section select authentication and this is where we're going to tell WinSCP to use that private key file we just generated. So click on the three little dots once again make sure that you're in the .ssh directory then select the backup private key file and click open. To back up the data from Nextcloud we need to connect with admin rights. To do this click on SFTP then click on the word default to highlight it and type sudo space forward slash usr forward slash lib forward slash sftp dash server and then click on OK. Because I don't want to have to enter that information every time I open the program, I'm going to click on save. I'm going to give it a meaningful name and then click OK. And now so long as the connection I just created is selected, I can click login. And because this is my first time connecting, I just need to click yes. You can see that WinSCP consists mainly of two panes, the left and the right. The left hand side is our local computer whereas the right is our Nextcloud server. What we need to do is set up the backup directory on our local computer and the directory where all the data resides on our Nextcloud server. First you need to decide where you're going to backup your data to. I'd suggest an external USB drive as these can be picked up quite cheaply these days. So I'm going to connect that to my computer now. If I open File Explorer I can see that I've now got a local disk E which is the USB drive I just connected. So make a note of your backup location. Next we're going to locate the directory where Nextcloud stores the data. So click on the drop down arrow next to your account's username and then click on root. From here we're going to double click on VAR then double click on snap. Next we'll go into Nextcloud followed by common then Nextcloud again and lastly data. This single directory on Nextcloud will contain the data from all of your accounts. So here I've got admin and bite my pie. All we need to do then is back up this one directory and select the backup drive to copy this to. Now unless you want to use the entire USB drive just for your Nextcloud backups, you'll need to right click on it and create a new directory. I'm going to call mine Nextcloud Backup and click OK. I'd suggest that it's only really your personal data that needs to be backed up as everything else can be rebuilt especially as we're using an Ubuntu appliance which makes the process so much simpler but even so you still don't want to have to manually locate the backup drive and the Nextcloud data directory every time you want to run a backup. Fortunately WinSCP should remember these for us but let's just make sure that that's the case. If you come up to session on the top bar and close the current session Make sure that backup is selected and click edit, then click on advanced and from there click on directories. Ensure that remember last used directory is ticked. Also make sure that the remote directory is set to the var snap nextcloud common nextcloud data folder. Check that the local directory contains the location of the backup drive and any folder you created to keep the backup in. And when all of that's correct, click on OK and then click Save. And then if we log back in, all that's left to do is set up the backup synchronization. Since we're backing up the remote directory to a local one, we need to set the direction slash target directory to local. Leave the mode on synchronize files. And if you want any files you delete from Nextcloud to also be removed from your backup, tick the delete files option. And then because we want to use these same settings each time, tick the box use same options next time and then click on OK. Technically you only need to have the folders of the next cloud account names ticked, but it won't take up much more space leaving them all selected. So let's click on OK to run the backup. Obviously the more data you've got the longer this process will take. But the beauty of synchronization is that it will only back up the changes since you last ran it which is much faster than running a full backup each time while still backing up all of your data. Right, when it's finished, click on OK. And there's your next cloud backup. Just click on Yes to exit. A couple of quick points when you want to run your backup again. 
Make sure that backup selected as you click login. Click on synchronize to begin. If you've disconnected your USB backup drive since the last backup, make sure that it's still available at the same location. Click OK to start the backup. I've added a new folder to my Nextcloud Byte My Pi account, imaginatively entitled My New Folder, so that there's a change since the last backup. Make sure all of the changes are selected, which they should be by default. Then click OK to run the backup. And that's it, when it's finished you can close out of everything. Lastly, don't forget to manually back up your SSH keys. So navigate to the C drive and to your user's home directory. And then these are located in the .ssh directory. So I'm simply going to copy that entire folder and then go into my USB drive and right click and paste it into there. Note, you only have to do this once. Make sure that you don't put it inside the Nextcloud backup data folder. As depending on the synchronization options that you set, next time you run a backup it may delete it. And that's how we back up Nextcloud to an external USB drive. And that almost brings us to the end of this video. I hope you now feel confident in taking your first steps to running your very own cloud, and can start to appreciate all of the advantages this can bring. With the built-in office suite and the potential to collaborate with other users, Nextcloud could even serve as a replacement for something like Google's G Suite. You've probably noticed that the one area we haven't covered in this video is accessing Nextcloud over the internet. At the moment it's only accessible on our local home network, but fret not my fellow tech enthusiasts, that's precisely what we'll be doing next time, and not just with Nextcloud. In the next video I'll show you how to securely access almost any device on your local network when you're out and about away from home. But that's it for this one. As always if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when I post the next one just click the bell icon. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.